Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to return to a band that we checked out a few months ago in a Sounds From My Inbox where they released their debut track. It was some pretty wild melodic metal core that kind of dove into a uh, death metal, death core kind of thing for a little bit in a breakdown. They got multiple vocalists. Uh, there's some clean singing with harshes. Like There was a lot of stuff in it that really worked for me, and I was impressed with it being the first track they released. They put out a new track a couple of weeks ago. That's what we're going to check out today. This one is called Shallow. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. The band's Echelon. <laughs> I'm terrible at this introduction thing. The band's Echelon. This track is Shallow. It's their second and latest release, and it features Hayden Connolly. Let's dive into it and see what Echelon is bringing to the table today. Okay, that was a wild way to start this. I kind of like the metallic sound on the vocals there. I think it really works with the aesthetic of the track. Got them layered harshes. Absolutely filthy layer on that. I like how this idea was uh, presented in this synthy piano line and so the shift to this quieter section feels a bit more natural and then that's just a hard shift back which makes sense to make the section feel punchy I like that guitar riff That really fat bass tone coming in clutch in this section too. The guitars fill up a lot of the low end, but that last section left that space a little open. And the bass really came through. I love that reverbery ambient synth behind all this. Absolutely gnarly way to end that. Whew. Yeah, so based on what I remember, this lines up with a lot of the stuff I enjoyed in the first one as well. Although I kind of remember there being more clean sections in the first. I don't know. It's been, like I said, it was last year sometime. I might have to go back and listen to it, especially since, you know, I listen to a lot of music right? Thousands of songs a year, maybe even tens of thousands of songs a year. 
Unfortunately, that means I don't remember any everything. So I'm a little bit ashamed to say as much as I enjoyed uh, the other track, Helios. I kind of forgot about Echelon. I need to put them on a, a little notepad. A band to uh, keep track. Oh, you know what? I just found out about this thing on Spotify where you can follow bands and get noticed, notified of releases. I didn't know about that. That's kind of cool. I might have to do that for Echelon so I don't miss another track. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Went on a side tangent about following bands and having so much good music coming out. It's hard to keep track of it all. All right. So, what is going on with this song? We have a lot of rhythmic textural guitar work going on here, but the song is not exclusively written like that. This is where a lot of the metalcore sound comes from. You kind of pick a couple of notes and bounce between them rhythmically. Sometimes you even just stick with one note and play it rhythmically, kind of giving it that genty vibe, which we do here in this as well with that boom, tchum, just to create the syncopation on a single note from the guitars. Um, so we do hear some of that, but we also have these sections where we'll just pick two notes and just move between them at different syncopated intervals. Again, very textural, very rhythmic. It does a little bit of contrast, but it's not for a melodic purpose. It's just to kind of change the sound up, especially since we have sections that focus on just one note. It's nice to move between two or three notes in other places so the song doesn't feel as one note as it could. Excuse the pun. The drumming underneath all of that usually works along with the syncopation of the guitars. The bass also work along that same syncopation. There's a real strong unity of texture and rhythm coming out of the entire band. And what this does is it creates a foundation. We have the chords that give us the energy, the atmosphere, the emotion. We have the rhythm. That's the groove. It gives us our tempo. The last uh, piece that we need is the melody, the, the key part that changes over time, and that's given to the vocals. So the instruments fill out everything that they need to. They're very big, large sounds, filling out the atmosphere, really creating this backdrop for the vocals to sing within. And that's where the vocals come in. They give us a ton of texture information. The two vocalists both have multiple types of harsh vocals. It allows the sound of the vocal layer to change. There's also some rhythmic elements in there that change up. Um, and so even though it isn't clean singing where we have a pure melody, there are still enough alterations and changes within the vocal delivery between the two vocalists and all their styles. Um, and the rhythmic changes that we get within that, that allow it to still hold itself in our ears and our mind as the, as the lead melody of the section, even though it isn't a melodious instrument. That's very cool. I love all the little contrast and, and techniques that go into the vocals in order to keep them fresh from moment to moment. Um, I, I mean, this is a personal thing, very subjective here, but I've listened to metalcore bands and the vocals can, for some vocalists, kind of get pushed into the background as they're very monotonous. They have one or two different vocal techniques that they have, and they usually stay with on them. They usually stay on them for an elongated amount of time. Maybe an entire section will be one style, and then the next section will be a different style. And so it really just is a texture and a rhythm, and sometimes even the rhythm becomes repetitive as they use a lick or an ostinato or in guitar terms, a riff for their rhythm. And when that happens, and there's all this repeating element, it kind of becomes a percussive sound for me. I push it into the rhythm section mentally. It's really easy for me to hear past it and try to figure out what everything else is doing. But in here, the lead vocals take that lead element of their role very seriously and ensure that there's a lot of contrast in order to keep the listener's attention and allows it so that the vocals don't become background noise. I really like that. Uh, I feel like I've harped on that a lot in my five years I've been doing this, but it is something that means a lot to me. And I recognize the qualities of the other style of vocals, the more monotonous style of harsh vocals. People like that. 
and it has its time and its place. As I say about everything, they're tools in a toolbox. There's no right way to make music. It just isn't something I enjoy usually. And so when I hear something like this where there's just so much movement, yeah, I'm there for that. After this verse, we get into a chorus, which uh, explores more movement from the guitars. We get the bass coming in here with its really big tone. But I think more importantly here is the clean vocals and some synthesizer stuff that widens out the entire song. If you thought that the guitars and the drums created this wide landscape, well, we just zoomed out and you're getting a bigger view now. There was more space after all, and the synths are filling that out. It's giving us a new texture, and it's really leaning into the harmonic chords of the writing. All of this is done with the clean vocals, which is giving us a strong melody to follow along with, and it's just a really big, bombastic section, which is kind of weird because it feels calmer and more relaxed. There's less energy in it, but it feels so much bigger than the verse. And I think that contrast of getting bigger in one way and smaller in a different way is a very cool way of keeping the song feeling fresh from section to section. Uh, we do the verse and the chorus again, and we come around to one of the first breakdowns. And here the song just seems to descend into gnarlier and gnarlier sounds. I know we come back to the chorus somewhere in this descent, but after the chorus, we end with this super gnarly breakdown. So I thought that was interesting. It's like this, this just descent into disgusting sounds. And then we're like, oh, actually, we made it out alive. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, man. So I enjoy that little fake out there. Plus, it's nice to have that contrast coming out of all that that really low, guttural, disgusting tones. Those uh, harsh, layered vocals really creating this overlap of textures and stuff. And we get this nice brightness, this bombastic, um, powerful, clean vocal stuff again. Just to kind of change things up for a second and return back to those depths. Uh, it's a fun little composition thing they have going there at the end. This whole breakdown section, the descent though, it is just gnarliness after gnarliness. We have low, slow, booming guitar stuff going on. Um, the drums are just hammering away. The, or, sorry, sorry, the drummer is just hammering away. I, I think he's just hitting these drums much harder than anywhere else in the song. Uh, the vocalists are going lower and grittier and more salival-lick stuff going on. <laughs> So many little crackles and, and, and white noise popping stuff coming up in some of these uh, tones. And then we get them layered. And that is just like an extra layer of filthiness go going on there. It's just, it gets gnarly. Oh, I forgot we did lighten up one section in here other than the chorus. Because the guitars moved up like an octave. And it opened up this pocket down here. And the bass really got to fill it in. So it was still sort of this heavier quasi breakdown stuff, but we weren't looking at like the lowest notes possible, which allowed the bass to shine through a little bit in the mix. And I love the bass tone. I would like a little bit more movement from the bass, but I don't think that's fair, honestly, because it wouldn't benefit the type of music that we have. Because honestly, nobody's really doing anything technically... Um, well, I'll just stop right there. No one's doing anything technical on here. It really is about the atmosphere of everything. So I suppose uh, it's not very fair for me to pull out the bass specifically. Hey, I wish you were doing something a little bit more technical. Because it does fit with what the song is doing overall. Um, but I guess that's just me putting a little bit too much weight on the bassist. Because basses uh, throughout metal history have sort of underplayed. So that's not fair to the bassist. I, I retract that statement. <laughs> the bass is fine. Um, yeah, I guess that wraps it up. And then, you know, the end of the song is just, golly, I need to go like wash my hands after that. Just filthy. All right, let me, uh, let me hit some lyrics here. See what's going on there. And then we will wrap this one up. This is an angry song. <laughs> the music kind of 
showcased that in a lot of ways. Uh, but lyrically, yeah, that's what it's about. Uh, somebody got backstabbed. He says, you know, I didn't disturb, I didn't deserve your hatred and those words that you weaponized and twisted. That's how the song starts. It goes downhill from there. It says, you're filthy, stained by the lies that you spread. Your poison's in my head, forever tainted perception. Death marked and flung to the abyss, never to be seen again. The idea that, you know, the words that you said had a strong effect on me it's it's a poison that seeped its way into me forever tainting my perception whenever i think of myself my self-image is modified by what you have said to me that's yeah we go on uh, a couple of stanzas as it sort of just continues to hammer home this idea until we get to a point where uh he mentions uh, that he says you can't talk your way away from the tip of a blade. Are you ready to meet your maker? He's getting ready to to kill this guy. Maybe metaphorically, right? Maybe just to end it, to get it, to get this guy out of his life. Maybe even just verbally stating everything to make him feel as small as he has felt in the past. Any way to get a little bit of revenge. And it's him letting him know the place that he's in. The back half of this, that whole descent down, is about uh, you know saying, hey, look, I'm in the position of power now. You don't hold power over me, and I can end you at any moment. Feel small, recognize my power. That's the kind of vibe that we got lyrically. I really like this chorus, though. It says, The weight of the earth was not the heaviest thing to lift when you buried me and left me to dead. Left me for dead. It was 20 years of shame and torment and pain, wishing I'd die there instead. That's, uh, that's wild. Uh, that's, that's wild. Very well spoken. And again, it's bombastic. It's a really big moment. It is when this person shows the pain that they have. Because the rest of this track is anger. Hey man, I was in pain. Now I'm going to inflict it on you. You're going to feel small. I'm going to let you know just how worthless you are, right? But the chorus is feel the pain I felt in an attempt for empathy to make this person feel bad too. I love it. It all comes together really well. And, uh, you know, musically, lyrically, it's a real strong thematic cohesion to everything. And the track is varied and constantly has new ideas coming up. And I'm just... I enjoy it. I said I enjoyed the last one. I'm enjoying this one. Echelon is definitely a band I got to get on my radar. I can't let another song slip through. <laughs> Those are just my thoughts, though, on Echelon's Shallow featuring Hayden Connolly. What did you think of it? Is there anything that you agree with me on? Maybe I should have expanded on. Maybe I was incorrect on and you'd like to tell me how I was wrong. Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on this track. Put all of that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to my music. No, you'll find a link to Linktree, which takes you to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. I'm also going to put Echelon's links in the description as well, so you can find their music if you're wanting to. Maybe you don't remember the other track and you like this. Definitely go check it out if that's the case. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Also, like and subscribe to Echelon as well. Show them some love from Critical Reactions. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to have an album review out. And 10 a.m. tomorrow, 
EST, uh, what is that, like 2 p.m. UTC, we're going to do a theme thoughts. I'm going to talk about uh, the melodic bass lines that we checked out this week. And then Sunday, we have the live stream at the usual time. I encourage everyone to come out. We just hang out and chat and get off topic and talk about weird stuff and listen to music. Very casual hangout session. It's very cool. Very fun. If you can make it, I highly suggest it. All right. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.